If you wanna know how to put together a Facebook lead ad step-by-step, -step, I've got the full tutorial and we're starting right now. If you wanna transform your website into a customer or lead generation machine, I'll show you all my best tips, tactics, and secrets to get there fast. Let's dive in. Hey there, I'm Wes McDowell, web strategist for The Deep End, and if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it so you never miss another video you need to succeed online. So building your email list is a really important part of building your overall business, no matter what kind of business you own. And to do that, you need a really great lead magnet. And if you're looking to scale it in a big way, you're gonna need a way to promote that lead magnet out to cold audiences Apart from just putting it on your website, unless you get a really large number of visitors to your website every day, you're not gonna have enough people in the top of that funnel to build that list of potential customers. And Facebook is still one of the best ways to promote a lead magnet. Now in the last video, I showed you everything you need for a really clickable Facebook lead ad. And if you haven't watched that video yet, click right up here for that. But just as a recap, you're gonna need a few eye-catching images a few curiosity peaking headlines, and a few variations of your description text. And you're definitely gonna to wanna to get your hands on this free swipe file I created, showing you around 50 of the best Facebook ads for lead magnets that I could find. I know how important it can be to see actual, you know, in the wild examples. So just click right up here or in the description below to get your hands on that. So today I'm gonna to walk you through step by step, you know, over my shoulder, exactly how to take all those raw elements you created and actually create the perfect Facebook lead ad in the ads manager. And the cool thing about a Facebook lead ad specifically is you don't even really need a landing page for it. So basically what happens is someone sees the ad, they click on the button, they get a little more information about it and Facebook already knows their name and email address obviously, so that information's already filled in all they need to do is press a button to confirm that they want it. Then Facebook connects automatically with your email provider like MailChimp or Drip, and it automatically triggers that automated email sequence campaign delivering that lead magnet right to them. And your new subscriber never had to leave Facebook to get it. So this is just a really seamless user experience. And since Facebook wants everyone to stay on the platform as long as possible, they're generally gonna reward you for keeping them there, which is gonna result in a lower cost per lead for you and no barrier to entry for your subscriber. So it's a win-win. So first things first, you're gonna need a Facebook ads manager account and your lead magnet delivery campaign set up in your email provider of choice. Again, like MailChimp or Drip or Constant Contact. But assuming you have all those things together, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in the ads manager and all you're gonna do to get there is go to facebook.com slash ads manager. And the first thing we're gonna do is just go down and click on create. And if you've done it before, it may prompt you to use an existing campaign, but I'm just gonna go and click on create new over here. And now you're gonna basically, this is where you're gonna choose uh, that it's going to be a lead ad, not just a normal uh, video or image ad like you may be used to. So you're gonna go down to lead generation, click on that. And you can, you can go ahead and give it a name if you want. I'm just gonna leave it at lead generation for now. And I'm gonna leave both of these uh, items unchecked as well and just click on set up ad account. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click continue here. I've already got this set up. Okay, now just make sure right here, it's gonna ask you to choose your Facebook page. So um, in this case, you're gonna, you can't really run an ad from a personal account or it has to be a business page. So I'm gonna, it's already chosen mine, the deep end, so I'm gonna leave it there. And right here it says about um, accepting Facebook's lead ads terms uh, of you. So basically, I've already done this, but if you haven't, it's gonna prompt you to view the terms and then you're gonna to have to accept them. There'll be a button there, but I've already done it, so just letting you know that may be something you have to do. All right, so the next thing here, um, remember how in the last video I told you to prepare a few images and a few headlines and a few different variations of your description text? So this is where um, that comes into play by using dynamic creative. So I'm gonna check that on, and basically what that is, is it basically, it allows you to input multiple images, multiple headlines, multiple sets of creative. And then what it does is it takes all those different uh, kind of combinations and it runs them against each other, showing them to different audiences. And it kind of learns over time which images perform better, which headlines perform better. And then it basically just kind of creates a super ad of all the best parts of those elements. So 
Let's go ahead and leave dynamic creative on, assuming you have more than one um, of each of those elements to work with. If you don't, if you just wanna do one, then you would leave that off. So here's where you're gonna define your audience. If you have a spreadsheet of your current customers or current or people who have opted in for your lead magnet already maybe, um, lookalike audiences can be really, really powerful. And I did do a video about lookalike audiences before. So click up here in the right corner if you wanna see that video. If you're gonna do that, you would actually, you would choose that in here. But for the purposes of this video, we're not gonna get into that. So we're just gonna go down and look at the other options. So. Um, it depends, you can choose the United States or you can add, you know, you could add Canada if you wanted to, um, add any countries that you think you want to target, or let's say you're a local business and you don't want to target the entire United States. You just want to target the city of Denver. So you'd click on that and then it would, um, it would only show your lead magnet of people in Denver. Um, that can be good because if you're a local business, you obviously don't want to pay to, uh, to market your lead magnet to the whole country if they're not going to end up being, becoming your customers anyway. So that you can do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Let's just leave it for that for now. And then you can target age. So, you know, if, if you know that your audience is not as young as 18, you know, maybe you want to go after 25 to 60 year olds it's it's good to kind of narrow it down as much as you can you can choose all or men or women uh, you can target a language if you want and here's where it gets interesting so detailed targeting this is where you're going to put in any kind of interests or hobbies or life events for the purpose of this video i'm doing a fake lead magnet for um, tax deductions so let's say you're an accountant and you want to have a lead magnet telling self-employed people how to get all the deductions they're entitled to so what i would do then I'm just typing in self-employed to see what pops up. So we've got self-employment as an interest. Um, that means they've generally clicked on other things that have to do with being self-employed. So, um, self-employed and loving it as a group. It's kind of a small group. Um, I would probably just go ahead and stick with uh, self-employment as an interest and see how that works. And then I'm going to go ahead and go all the way down and uh, placement. So there's two options here. You can do automatic placements or edit placements. Um, I'm just going to leave it on automatic for now and then going on down to budget and schedule. This is basically how, uh, where you input how much you want to spend per day. I recommend using a daily budget. Um, it can, you can make it whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and it, but the cool thing is it'll tell you over here based on what you've already input, what you can reasonably expect. Um, so basically it's saying you can reach about 210 to 820 people a day. I know that's a big range, but at least it gives you some kind of idea. So let's go ahead and click on continue. Okay, so now basically it's asking you to choose the format of the ad. Uh, since we've got dynamic creative enabled, um, th the only choice you really have is a single image or video. Keep in mind though, we're gonna be putting multiple images in, and it's but it's only gonna show one at a time to individual people. So to the end user, it's just gonna look like a single image ad. So we can scroll down and keep going here. So basically the first thing it's gonna ask us to do is to choose an image. So um, it's already got this one loaded up. That's kind of my, my profile or cover photo. I'm just gonna delete that. And I'm gonna upload several different images here. Okay, so I've uploaded four different images. Um, some more straight, this one's kind of straightforward. This one's a little more colorful. This one's kind of the, kind of a pattern interrupt because it's, it's a cat holding up money. It's just, I think it's, it'd be good for some, uh, some attention grabbing. And then one that's very different. This is kind of more illustration and bright color. So we'll see what works best. And then we scroll down and then here's where we're gonna put in the text. Um, the text that goes right up here, the description text. So remember I told you to, to prepare one version that's a little longer form and one that's shorter. So let's go ahead and put those in now. So you'll put in one, and then to put in the next one, you'll just click on add, and then you'll do it again in this box here. Okay, so now we've got two different uh, description texts that it can run between. And then let's now, let's now do the headline. So you're gonna input that right here, just do your first one, and then click add and do the next one and so on. I'm doing three here, so then, uh, okay, so I've got three different headlines here I can choose between. And then in the newsfeed link description, we'll just type something like, just download it today, telling them what to do. And again, you can do up to five of these. I'm just gonna keep it to one for simplicity. And then call to action. So what I would recommend doing here is just um, click on learn more 
because what's actually going to happen is it's going to take them to a new screen where they're going to kind of confirm it before they get access to it. So, and they've shown that learn more is generally a cheaper call to action on a cost per lead basis. They've done studies on this. So leaving it there for now. Okay. And then scrolling down. Okay. So instant form. So let's go ahead and click on new form here. So this is what's going to happen with, so they're going to click on the, the learn more button and it's going to slide up and it's going to give them a little bit more information. And then it's going to prompt them to kind of put in their email and name, except in most cases, remember Facebook already has this information and it will be filled in already. So you've got a few options here. Uh, more volume, so it's a form that's quick to fill out and submit on a mobile device, which means you're gonna get more leads or higher intent. So this adds a review step that might get in the way of some people filling it out, but the good news is here, it's gonna be a more committed group of people. So if you don't just want a high number, but you want people that are really, um, that are a little more serious, you might wanna click on higher intent. But I think in most cases, just for a lead magnet, I'm gonna go with more volume. So let's get right into this area. So let's go on to intro. So in the headline, just tell them exactly what they're gonna get. And you can upload a new image here that it's gonna be here, or it's just gonna pull in the image you use on the ad itself if you don't. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. And then right here, you wanna put something in here too, giving them a reason. So what I would do, what I like to do generally is to make this a bullet list giving them three to five solid things that they're gonna learn and benefit from, from getting access to your lead magnet. Okay, so I've put three in here. And you know what, now that I'm looking at this, I think I wanna change this headline uh, to be a little more tied to these bullets below. So I'm gonna rewrite this. Okay, so I've just changed it to, inside the ultimate tax deduction guide, you'll discover, and then bullet, bullet, bullet. I think this is a really solid way to sell this actual guide. So I th I'm pretty happy with this. Um, so let's go down to the next step where it asks for the questions, because right down here, it's gonna ask for some pieces of information. Let's go ahead and edit this because I don't, I like email, you need that. Um, but I would definitely recommend instead of full name, just asking for a first name. You're more likely to, uh, to get people to do it. So let's go ahead and uncheck uh, full name and click on show more options. And I'm just gonna click on first name. And that's it. You can ask any of these questions or even custom questions, but I really don't recommend it. The more of these questions you ask, um, you know, some people want to ask for a phone number. I got to say you're very unlikely to get many signups that way. So, and remember, this is just the first date. You know, this is, this is the lead magnet. This isn't trying to get a client right out of the gate. So um, you just want to get people into your world and it's enough to ask for their email and first name to, to do that. So then we're gonna go down. Um, so privacy policy. So I didn't really mention this before, but on your website, you definitely need a privacy policy page. There are privacy policy generators out there online. So I'll leave a link to that below in the description. So basically just, it's, it can be a really simple page of just pure text. So you're gonna want to um, link to that here. So get it set up on your site and then link to it. Privacy policy and then you're gonna to link to it right there, like so. All right, then you're just gonna to wanna to customize the thank you screen. So this is what people see after they've actually opted in for your lead magnet. So what some people do here is they actually make this button be a direct download to the lead magnet, which you can absolutely do. So what would happen is they've, they've signed up, they've given over their information, and now you have access to that on Facebook. You can download that as a spreadsheet so in that case, you know, this button would say download and then you would, um, and then you just type in download in the button text and then you would actually link right to your lead magnet from here, which is fine. Um, that's one way to do it. And it's certainly the easier way to do it. So people have given their information and then that exists on a spreadsheet on Facebook that you can access periodically and add these people to your list. However, the way I like to do it is I actually like to sync this with my CRM, you know, um, which is like MailChimp or Drip is what I use or Constant Contact, one of these things where it automatically feeds that information into your CRM and then it fires off a campaign email emailing them the lead magnet. Here's why I prefer that method. Because what you actually kind of want to do is train your leads to know to open emails from you. And when they open up that first email, it's actually a signal to a lot of email providers not to put this in, not to put your future emails in the promotions tab, but rather in 
the inbox. It requires an extra step that I'm gonna to touch on in a bit. So to actually have them download it here, again, is the easier way of doing it, but it's not the recommended way. What I actually recommend doing is letting them know it's going to be emailed to them. So I would actually recommend letting them know that right here so that nobody's confused. So just let them know that the guide's going to be emailed to them. And then I would change the button type to, uh, it could be view website, and then you can send them to your website after that, or whatever you'd want them to do. If, there's, if you have a certain page on your website, you might want them to see, or even a blog post, go ahead and put it here. And then you just put the link to that right there, just like that. All right, then when you're done, you're just gonna go up top and click on finish. But now if you're actually going to hook that form up to your CRM, like I mentioned, this is what you're gonna do. This is how I'm gonna get you started down the right path anyway. And then depending on your CRM provider, there's gonna be different ways of doing it. So I can only get you so far, but you're gonna to wanna to come to your business page on Facebook, and then you're gonna click right up here on publishing tools. And then on the left sidebar, you're gonna go down to leads setup. And then there's a search box right here that's gonna let you look for your email provider. So I think a lot of you are probably using MailChimp, so let's go ahead and type that in. Just gonna go ahead and click on that. And depending on which CRM you use, the steps from here on out are gonna be different. So in this case, you would just click on connect and you'd follow the steps. Now it can get a little technical from there, but as long as you follow along with the steps for your specific email provider, you should be able to get all the way through it in a pretty seamless way. So if you have any specific questions about that part of the process, I'm probably not gonna be able to answer it for you because I only know Drip, and if you have anything else, it's gonna be a different story. But basically, if you do run into any hiccups along the way, just get in touch with your email provider's technical support via email, and they'll be able to walk you through the process and get it all finished for you. Now I wanna hear from you, and I want a few brave people to actually leave in the comments below, uh, what's the name of your lead magnet, and what type of lead magnet are you gonna use? Uh, that way other people can kinda of see what other people are doing, and uh, people can learn from your example. So leave that below, along with any questions or comments you have about this video, and I'll answer every question I possibly can. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and click on the circle icon right over here to subscribe, and remember to get that swipe file of all the best Facebook lead magnet ads I could find, go ahead and click this box right up here. All right guys, Wes McDowell for the deep end and I'll see you in our next video.